Well, how does Kyle Kuzma fit into what the team is trying to accomplish? Well, I would say, first off, thank you guys for being here. I think coming to Las Vegas, it's the, the best part of the summer for everyone. You get to see our young players. You get to see the staff and grow in developmental moments for everyone. I think there's a lot of milestones when you trace your time back to coming to Vegas and seeing these guys compete. So I'm really excited for our young guys to get after it today. I would say it's good to have Kuz and Jordan here. We're excited about them as well. And when you add both those guys, retaining Kyle and then adding Jordan to the team, I think you get excited about two guys that fit culturally. Um, who have a, a character and a work ethic and a drive that have gotten them to where they're at. And you're adding those guys to the young group and the group of veterans we've put together. That's exciting. I would say they've been around winning, both of them. They've seen it. And they're both excited to be wizards and take on that role and responsibility and kind of helping the young guys as well. But the best part about those guys is if you look at the arc and trajectory of their career, they're still getting better. They're pre-prime, early prime players that have gotten better and coming off career scoring years. So those guys are gonna come in, they're gonna continue to work, they're gonna walk the walk and talk the talk and push the group moving forward. I think that's how they fit in to answer that question. What is your hope for alchemy here in terms of bringing our different players in from winning programs and see who are in different roles in those winning yeah. programs and seeing what they can create here to yeah, I think they're all connected by a will to win, connected by a competitiveness, but also nothing was handed to the guys over Brian bringing them. You look at Ty, you look at the, the way these guys have competed, um, and then you bring in veteran guys that I've been around as well that I know how they work and can apply themselves, and you put that on the mix with the young guys, I think that's how it applies. And how you can kind of achieve what we're looking to achieve, but the personalities of the group, the character of the group, and the passion that they have for basketball. I think Mike, Michael and I talked about that early on, like finding guys that want to hoop mm -hmm. and want to get after it. And we feel like we got that in the short little period. How do you envision the offense running with Jordan and Kuz in the Well, I think you can ask Coach a little bit more about that <laughs> one. Um, but I just know their talented wings can play on the ball, can play off the ball. If you look at them, they both got better facilitating. I was actually joking with them about that this morning. Um, but those guys, they know how to play on both ends. They know how to find their teammates, and when you give them the ball late clock or on the move, they can make decisions, make shots. And at their size, that's that's impressive. Huh? Great. I have nothing but good things to say about Michael. Obviously, we were together in Oklahoma City for a while, and we just reconnected right away. Fortunate for the opportunity he's given me. Mike's been able to kind of make sure bigger picture, higher level things are staying afloat. And we talk every day, we meet every day, and we're trying to do the best we can. When you guys do it, you did this awesome. Is that kind of a, a hard decision? But how do you decide, okay, you know, it's, it's time to do um, I think it depends on which part of it. I would say day one, when we got to Washington, we said that we we're going to evaluate everything. We're going to evaluate the organization. We're going to evaluate all the players and kind of assess from them. And we're still doing that. We'll continue to do that. But in the little period that we've had, the moves we made, I think you've seen we've reshaped the roster a little bit to bring in a little bit more of a youth movement, more established players that know what it's about. But at the same time, we've added to our draft assets. And strategically, we've been able to add to our war chest or whatever you want to call it, using the traded player exception and things of that nature. So we'll continue to be opportunistic. If things come along and we decide we need to look at, we will. But we'll always have a future and short-term goals on everything. How did you guys approach the conversations with Kyle, given all the changes? You know, it's like new front office, yeah. two guys going out. Yeah. His role and responsibilities are going to increase. Is that What was that process like, I guess? Fun, I would say that, because I didn't know Kyle uh, personally. So getting to know him, the best thing that I realized really quickly on our dinners and time on the phone spent with him is he knows who he is as a person. He owns that, and I really respect him. And we had some open and honest conversations about what it had been like and what it could be like here. And neither of us hit anything. His agent is amazing. The agency was open, two-way communication the entire time. And when Michael and I had an opportunity to just really talk about what it looks like, what it's gonna be, we wanted him to be a part of that. And he wanted to be a part of that as well. So for us, um, the conversation was easy, but it was honest and real. I think that's what made it easy.
in some teams in your spot, you could have potentially kept Chris Paul or done something with his contract, gone a lot cheaper. But you take a you know a little bit of an investment in Jordan Poole as a player, potentially be a poor guy for you. What was it about him that made you excited about that investment? Yeah, I would say we are excited to have Jordan. I think you used the right word. With Jordan, again, I think I mentioned it before, his career arc trajectory is still going up. And from all accounts, how he handled everything that was thrown at him at Golden State with the professionalism and the character and like the substance to get through all that stuff, you, you want to be around people like that. And he continued to improve and continue to work. And his story, again, isn't everything was handed to me. He had to go get it. Um, so when you have players like that that are young, want to get better, and have been around winning, you, you want to go after those kind of guys. How do you feel about, you know, Paul Valley, a name that just really started buzzing, especially in the yeah. draft, a name that really took off. You guys, you know, drafted him where you guys did. And then also Ryan Rollins and also Patrick Baldwin, guys that really got game, getting a lot of respect from a lot of NBA athletes yeah. too. How do you feel about those acquisitions and a lot of the young talent you have? I appreciate you asking me about those guys because no one has yet. I would say, well, Bilal they have obviously. Yeah. Um, but it's been great having them in the gym with Ryan, um, specifically the guys that are coming over from Golden State, Patrick. You, we haven't seen him in the gym because of the trade obviously going through. So we've got to see him practice yesterday, some shoot around today. It was good to have them in the mix. Those are guys we knew well, just covering the draft and going through the process and interviewing them. So we had a feel for them as people, but getting other young players who are established and they've been around winning as well. They know what it looks like and they're hungry. And they're like, as soon as we call them and the trade's going through, like, no, we want to play summer league. We want to prove it. We want to get after it, show some people stuff. So um, as you know, summer league can have some ups, some downs, some, some highs and some lows, but I think you'll get a competitive group that'll play together, and those three guys should play a lot. I think this is the first time we've talked to you since the Brad trade officially yep. went through. Obviously, you guys met with him, wanted to assess all those kind of things. What came down to the final factor of saying that, okay, yes, we are going to go with a reset, and how did that all play out? Yeah, appreciate you asking me that one as well. With Brad, before I even get into how the conversation went, the amount he meant to the city, um, to the organization, inside the walls, outside the walls, on the court, like extreme gratification for the way he carried himself before I even got there. And then once Michael and I got time to really sit down with him and just get to know him, like he's a tremendous human, um, cares about a lot, cares about his family, and all those things, it started to make sense. Like he's an all-time wizard. So when you approach those conversations, you want to be honest and genuine and do what's best for the player in that situation. And I think that whatever we kind of came up with and what got done when you really look at it, I think it was mutually beneficial for both parties. And we wanted it to be that way. And his reputation or representation as well as like top notch, handled everything really above board and clean. And it made it easy for everyone. But once we learned of the intentions and we knew what we want to do, we were able to kind of add some pieces into it to make it beneficial to us as well. Kind of going to do right by him. And I'm excited to see what he can do, but I'm also excited for the guys behind him and that are coming up to fill some of those holes. Yes, publicly there was a delay between the one trade and the <laughs> second one. Were you guys already steps ahead in terms of knowing that it was sort of going to be pool for Brad, you know? I would say the timing on everything is hard to remember because there was a lot going on, if you can imagine, and being in those steps. But everything is put together in a short amount of time. So it's all interconnected. Jordan Goodwin was someone who the team had developed and yes. had grown. Yes. Uh, Obviously, Phoenix asked for him, but how difficult was it to, or how did you weigh whether to include him in that deal or not? Yeah, I think with every player who is as respected as he was for how he competed and stayed on the roster last year, um, you got to have those conversations on expecting him to be here. And then once another team, you're doing a big deal, sometimes you got to give away some pieces and do things that you might want to have with you, but. At the end, you got to do what's best for the organization. And I think he's going to be productive no matter where he is and pulling for him. I know you're here at Washington now, but what did you learn from OKC? I feel like you guys made some big moves. Jay Will, especially, surprised a lot of people taking him. And then also getting Giddy and getting that piece piecing together that young core. What are some things you could take from there that you can build to Washington too as well? Where do I start? Um, I learned a lot in my time in Oklahoma City. Very fortunate to be around Sam Presti and Troy Weaver and Rob Hennigan, Rich Cho, guys that like saw the game differently and weren't afraid to take chances. Um, very thorough, very calculated, very strategic in everything that we did there. And hopefully that be the same things you guys are saying about the Washington Wizards here in a few years.
obviously it's too far to tell, but do you envision Bilal starting the regular season or is that still to be worked out? Yeah, I think that's a, a TBD on that one. I do know that he'll be playing, but I don't know what the role will be. But I think with basketball, that kind of takes care of itself. And I won't put a time on, on him and coach will handle all that stuff. With, with the way basketball is growing, especially in France, too, we see yep. it take off you know, yep. there. When did you first see Koulibaly play and then like start monitoring his situation? What was that? Yeah, I would say our scouts caught him last summer. And then he obviously had the run he had during the under 18s, I believe it was. Then got the time to play against the USA team that went over there early, let's call it early fall, and really defensively was a, a menace. So then you start following him on tape, get an opportunity to kind of watch him in the Espoir under 21 league. And he's playing with the ball more, doing more, and then he just continued to grow. And there were some issues with the team where guards left, guys didn't really like the contract, guys got injured, and he was able to get an opportunity with the pro team, hit the ground running, kept developing at a young 18 years old. So at that point, you gotta start tracking and gotta go see him. So I was able to go see him practice, see him play. Fortunately, we were lucky enough to get him into DC and put him through some things and see how he moves functionally and kind of where he was at and really dig under the hood. And we like what we saw. What's your approach to summer league? And the reason I ask is because Oklahoma City, going back to that, they seem to like to bring their players back even if they have the experience to play in the summer league. Should we expect something similar in Washington? Um, I would say yes. I'm a fan of guys working on their game and then going out there and proving it and going out there and trying stuff outside of a one on one situation. So we're very fortunate in Oklahoma City to have the Durants and Westbrooks and Hardens and all those guys play their first two years of summer league. So it's very easy when the other players were asking, do I have to play? Yes, and the reason why. So I anticipate guys playing um, unless there's obviously injury or reason not to do it. Summer league here versus national team, the Olympics next summer. So that might be a lot of things of that nature. But for the most part, we want guys to get after and compete whenever we step on the field. Obviously, you guys are always looking to improve the roster, but would you say that the roster currently is probably what's going to be going into training camp or still can be moved on the horizon? Yeah, I'd say we're always going to look to be opportunistic. Um, we have more than the number of guaranteed contracts on the roster now, so we'll have to do something at some point. But it's a long season um, until the start of the season. We call this the off-season period, a pretty long season and we'll make the right moves whenever it comes to it. Uh, we have no issue with guys coming into camp and competing and earning spots. What are the benchmarks for this season for a good season for you guys? I mean, do you have win total in mind, playing mix in mind? I mean, yeah, I would say I'd, I try not to put a cap on any season or any team. The goals will be less driven by winning and outcomes and more about style of play, um, competitiveness, how you're evolving the game moving forward and guys getting better. And those will be more of my benchmarks than wins and losses. You are talking about the Brad discussions earlier. Yep. Is that an awkward spot to be in though? You guys are the new guys. And, <laughs> you know, he's, like you said, an all-time wizard. I mean, how do you how do you process it? Yeah, he made it easy. Yeah. I'll say that. You guys probably know him better than I do and spent more time with him, but the time we spent at the facility and the time we spent outside the facility at dinners and like just spending time, he made it easy. He's great. Um, so I owe that to him on that one. That's the last personal question. I mean, you used to play, you played in college. Uh-oh. How did you? <laughs> you uh -oh. said, how did you I don't know if we want to talk about I, that. I, I mean, you know, I play overseas, but just you, like, making that connection, like, getting into the front office and doing that, how did you make that connection, you know, just for the players out there that aspire to be in a position yeah. that you're in? Yeah. How do you get to that spot? Well, keep my playing career out of it. <laughs> that wasn't anything you guys want to go Google or highlight <laughs> on that one. Um, but... I will say I was very, very fortunate. My steps were, were ordered, I believe, in a higher power in that aspect. Mm -hmm. But I also came from a program that's different. At Emerson College, we're built a little differently. We had to do things that most people wouldn't want to do in terms of like practicing outside and like finding your own ride to practice 30 minutes away, not having a home gym our first two years. Like Hank Smith builds you up so that you can take on anything. And to be honest, when Sam offered me an internship, I knew what I was signing up for. He knew what I was signing up, what he was signing up for. And the bond of being a B5B Emerson College um, graduate or participant in our program, um, it, it, it means a lot. So I would say the place I went, more so than my playing career, prepared me for the job I'm in. You call this a rebuild, retool? What do you call this? Um, reshaping? 
Will that work? <laughs> Rebuilding. <laughs> re reshaping. Just reshaped a few things. When you're able to bring guys back and retain players like Kuzma, I think you're reshaping. When you're able to add guards like Tyus and Jordan Poole, I think you're just reshaping because those guys are ready to play. And we brought in a lot of veteran guys like Shamid and um, Gallinari and Scala. Like, those guys have played and played high-level winning basketball and know what goes into it. So I think it's more reshaping.